I'm Mark Lloyd, I'm Chief Executive of the Rivers Trust. This is one of my favourite places in the entire world. It's a little river in Devon that I've been fishing for 20 odd years. It's a real gem, it's a beautiful place, it's surrounded by trees and wildlife, you can hear the bird song, and it's got salmon and sea trout in it. Come on, Rusty. Come on, here. You know, this river is not without its problems. There are lots of issues which we've seen kind of develop over the years. It's sad, really, seeing it struggling. Good boy. This should be a huge salmon. Leave it, Rusty. Beautiful little little trout with amazing red spots Ooh. and it's gone. We're not doing enough to look after our rivers. There's no river in the UK that passes for chemical contamination and few rivers are in good ecological health. One of the things we really need to do to understand our rivers is to do more testing and to collect more data. And I think one of the things that outdoor swimmers want to know is just more information about the quality of the water that they're swimming in. Um, I'm going to take a, a water sample from the River Dart to um, analyse it for the water quality. Ooh. That's all looking quite good today. Legislation wise, we have the, the rudimentary legislation there, um, but because the Environment Agency has, has been cut over the years, the staff is not what it used to be, they've not been able to enforce it. Water quality has obviously been a great focus in the media recently, and we've seen issues about sewage. Suspended solids, turbidity, phosphate. And that is a large part of the problem. The other major polluter is agriculture, and that's mainly um, fertilizers and, and animal waste and pesticides. And much as I don't, I'd much prefer farmers to farm in an environmentally friendly way for voluntary reasons, sometimes there is a need for enforcement. This is actually deionized water. So we use this as a, and we zero against that. So that's our base. Um, and then we test the water from the river against that. So a river is really a product of the catchment area it drains. So if we've farmed the landscape um, intensively, if we've overgrazed fields, if we've tilled the soil in autumn and left a bare field, water rushes off those fields and takes with it vast quantities of soil. And on the soil you have lots of nutrients, lots of phosphates and agrochemicals which um, go into the river. But the soil itself is also a real problem because it gets into the gaps between the stones, which is where invertebrates live, the insects, which are the food for not only fish, but also thousands of bird species. So we need to keep soil in the fields. It's a really precious resource soil. It's created very, very slowly by geological processes. Um, and we can't afford to wash it all out to sea via our rivers. Well, as, as well as looking at soil structure um, and making sure they keep that in, in, in tip-top condition, um, they've looked at the bits of the farm that historically they knew were wet um, and have since been drained, and they've actually opened up a couple of areas for new ponds. Not even two years on, we have lots of ducks, peregrine falcons, catch swallows over here. Wow. Yeah, this is a major bonus in the landscape, isn't it? Yeah, it's remarkable how quickly life comes back mm. when there's some, some water. Farming-wise, you've not lost a, a lot have you, in terms We've of productivity. Not even one cow's grazing for both projects. Mm. The other pond down the end. It's an interesting way to work it out, it's actually. It's a really hectare. good way to work it out. With our stopping yeah. rate, it's about one hectare. What we're seeing already is that farmers are now starting to entertain the idea of creating new woodland or wetland. Whereas previously it was financially detrimental to them to do so because they'd lose that bit of land from their payment. But what the bit that's missing at the moment is we don't have an adequate incentive scheme to reward them for doing that.
This is a, this is a problem which um, needs solving with integrated holistic solutions. And the best way of doing it is to use nature, to restore nature in our landscape, because nature has the ability to purify water and uh, capture it and slow the flow of, of water, allow it to sink into the ground and allow it to provide a viable source during droughts, which are gonna become ever more common, and reduce the threat of flooding, which causes misery to, to millions of people um, every year. Over the years, we've straightened nearly all of our rivers. We've got rid of meanders, we've removed all their natural features. And, and what happens with a river as it meanders is it creates pools, deeper areas, and then riffles, which are areas of gravel. Now, as the water moves through those gravel areas, bacteria process pollutants in the water, and also those gravels are a vital home for invertebrates and where fish lay their eggs. If you get rid of those pool, that pool and riffle sequence and just make it into a long straight canal, um, as we've done with so many of our rivers, you just get this long, bland stretch of, of, um, of, of river which doesn't have any variation to it and it doesn't have that ability to process pollutants and provide space for, for wildlife to thrive. So we really need a piece of legislation to bring together climate and, and ecology so that we can, we can treat these two enormous challenges facing us. These things are going to change everyone's life for, for much for the worse. And we need, to, we need to take that seriously and have all government departments bought into a really clear action plan. Yeah, I mean, it strikes me that we've got just too many problems to solve one at a time. There's these enormous challenges of, of biodiversity decline, climate change, you know, river water quality is a, is a wicked problem in itself. I mean, farmers are getting a lot of stick for the state of the rivers, but it's not really that fair because they're, they're kind of prisoners of the of uh, an unsustainable food system. It's as complex as knife crime or yeah. you know, hospital waiting lists. You know, yeah, these, are, yeah. these, are, these are big thorny problems that we're trying to wrestle with and they're all come at once. And, and we feel this way in terms of solving some of the problems around our rivers. People often decouple climate from, from biodiversity, but, but actually they're completely intrinsically interlinked. And I mean, what you've just uh, given me there is just such a positive vision. You know, there's so much uh, doom and gloom around uh, around nature and climate just now and that's just such a positive vision that's just you know why don't we just do it <laughs> yeah so we think no, nature-based solutions exactly are a no-brainer you know we, we it makes so much sense once you start looking at it it doesn't necessarily mean spending a lot more money I think it just means spending the money we have a lot more intelligently yes. and, and in a joined up way.